ready? Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video is going to demonstrate my brand new trumpet. <laughs> and it's a birthday gift from my wonderful wife. And it looks awesome. It makes a really nice sonic imp or visual impression. And I'm going to go over the, the pluses and uh, possible potential negatives of a trumpet like this. But first, let's have a little lesson about what a trumpet is and how it makes a sound. You can see that a normal trumpet is the same size as this one. Are we YouTubing? Yeah, we're YouTubing. And so, hi guys, when you my channel, like and subscribe. <laughs> when when you um, when you unwind this part, it's four feet six inches from the the tip to the bell, and so that. When, when you uh, buzz in your mouth, mouthpiece, it, it makes a certain sound. And the, the neat thing about the physics of sound is that when you buzz a little faster, it can make higher and higher tones. So for instance, this same length can make this tone, but it also can make these other ones. And so on and so on and so forth. And so on forth and so on and so forth. <laughs> and you may notice that each note as it gets um, higher and higher up gets actually closer together. And the reason is if you can imagine that four foot six inch wave, the fundamental uh, pitch is like a wave that goes from this note to this note. And as you get faster, you split it in half. So the first note you heard was the B flat, that was the first harmonic. And then the next one, you split it in thirds, wave up, wave down, wave up. And then the next one is up, down, up, down. Anyway, so they get closer and closer together. The pitches and tones get closer and closer together. But a trumpet, a valve trumpet can make all sorts of different noises and tones because of these little piston valves that go up and down. And what happens is when you depress this, the tubing increases by a length of this little tube right here. And so there's three different buttons. It, you have a choice of being up or down. So those two choices times, or to the third power, that is a total of eight different combinations anywhere between all the way up and all the way down. And when you mix them and match all those together, you can make a lot of music. Um, and this is a normal trumpet, as you can see. And here are the valves that go up and down. And then this right here is called a rotary valve trumpet. And you can see there's no, there's no rotary valves that open up these, or there's no pistons that open this up. It's a rotation. So, so the little apparatus in here turns 90 degrees when I depress this valve. And you can see what happens here. Um, so that is the main difference. Now, if you can get really close, you can hear how quiet this is and how quick, lightning quick this is, as opposed to clunky clunkerson. So <laughs> um, that is a little bit as to wh what the main difference is. And you can see the reason why this interesting, unique looking bend is here is because at the depressed amount at the rotary, um, this would have collided with a bell like, that's like this. The other huge, huge difference is instead of having a lead pipe that goes all the way from here to here, the lead pipe only goes from here to the first valve. So what I'm noticing is a lot of water is collecting, more so um, in this newer trumpet than the other ones. And so that is one, I would say the one drawback is that you get the little kind of vibration that comes from having water in the keys. Um, more frequently than with a traditional one. Anyway, this is how it plays. I would say that it feels a lot like a cornet. It's not as brilliant of a sound, and I would say it's a little bit more compact. And so here is a little demonstration. Okay, that is the new trumpet. Here is this old hunk of junk. Okay. Um, I'll play a long tone, and you can hear uh, that this 
one kind of fills the room a little bit more, a little bit more brilliant. It takes a little bit less time to get to that kind of ringing and vibration. You can see that I have to hold this differently as well. And I've, I'm finding it very interesting to feel the vibration of the sound coming through the bell um, as my hand is around here instead of the, uh, the, valve the, the rotary valve apparatus. Um, it's a neat, unique feel. The other thing that I have to do differently when I hold it is there's a, a little thumb rest in the nook right here. And there's, a, of course, still a, a pinky ring. But um, it really requires me to kind of hold it more so with a thumb and pinky grip, more so than the traditional, where I really have all the pressure with my left hand. The, the one thing that I've had a, a bit of getting used to is the position of my right hand on top of the valves. Um, I was always taught to kind of lock my thumb in between the first and second um, piston valve and that would allow me to kind of have really free, quick fingers right on top of the valves. Um, this one, my hand is flat and it still works really well, um, but I don't feel like I can play with the pinky out and I feel like I, it has to be flatter. So, um, okay, so let's do a song. <laughs> slower song there. Um, if we were to do something pretty quick, like a, an F scale. It's just, it's lightning quick, it's super easy. Um, and I don't know if people who are listening to you play can hear your vowels, but you probably will be able to hear me slam these up and down now. It's just, this one is just lightning fast. As far as the upper register goes, it's quite a free upper register. Um, and then the final thing I want to show you is what it sounds like when, when, um, I have a lead mouthpiece. I don't know whether it's the, the bell location or what, but um, the, the upper register is free and it seems like it's uh, really uh, a focused uh, upper register sound. So let's see here. Quiet in there. <laughs> listening to this video and <laughs> I hope you learned a lot and I would like to extend my offer if you are a trumpet player locally and would like to try out the horn you are welcome to let me know thank you goodbye <laughs> <laughs>